Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. AMD has just finished their presentation detailing Zen 3, which I'm sure for many of you has been quite an exciting event, learning about what AMD has in store for next generation processors. Thanks to the power of my moustache, I've been able to produce this video instantly to give you all of our thoughts on the event and what has been shown off. So if you've just watched the event, now is the perfect time to sit back and hear some analysis. Let's very quickly recap the new Ryzen 5000 lineup before we can dig into some of the other things AMD has talked about and a few brief answers to some of our questions. So yes, firstly this is the Ryzen 5000 series. AMD has branded this lineup in this way to avoid any confusion with existing Ryzen 4000 parts. AMD has had this weird split for a while where Zen 2 on mobile has been Ryzen 4000 while Zen 2 on desktop has been Ryzen 3000. That ends today with the Ryzen 5000 series, which is all Zen 3 moving forward. AMD have announced four processors, all of which will be available on November 5th. This slide shows off the main three. The Ryzen 9 5900X brings a 12-core, 24-thread design with a 4.8GHz boost clock, 70MB of cache split into 64MB L3 and 6MB L2, along with a 105W TDP. It'll be available for $549. US Next up is the Ryzen 7 5800X, an 8-core, 16-thread part with a 4.7GHz boost clock, 32MB of L3 cache, and 105W TDP for $449. US and then we have the Ryzen 5 5600X, which at $299 brings 6 cores, 12 threads, a 4.6 GHz boost clock, 32 MB of L3 cache, and a 65 Watt TDP. Lastly, sitting at the top of the stack is the Ryzen 9 5950X. 16 cores, 32 threads with a boost clock up to 4.9 GHz, 72 MB of L3 plus L2 cache, and a 105 Watt TDP. That CPU will be priced at $800 US with the same November 5 launch date as, so, as I said, all four CPUs on the same day worldwide. So just based on the specifications, there is a bit to work through here. AMD has kept the same core count configuration for their lineup. There were a few dodgy rumors suggesting AMD might have a 10 core in the works, but this hasn't eventuated. Same 16 core through six core line. We're also getting the same amount of cache in each chip and the same TDP with AMD explicitly mentioning to us that power consumption will be the same between Zen 2 and Zen 3 based chips, presumably of the same core count. One aspect of the Ryzen 5000 series that you can see from these specs is the higher frequency AMD are able to hit. Previously for the X series, AMD were hitting 4.4, 4.5, 4 4.6 and 4.7 GHz from the 6 core through to 16 core models. Then with the XT series, we got a small bump up to 4.5, 4.7 and 4.7 GHz for 6 through 12 core designs. With Zen 3, AMD are hitting slightly higher clocks again. We're now seeing 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, and 4.9 gigahertz across the line, which is 100 to 200 megahertz higher than the X and XT Zen 2 parts, depending on the SKU. So that's a modest gain. However, AMD have been able to achieve this with no changes to the process node they are using. AMD confirmed to us that Zen 3 and Ryzen 5000 CPUs are still using TSMC's 7 nanometer node, not 7 nanometer plus or 7 nanometer enhanced, but just a regular old 7 nanometer. AMD were able to hit higher frequencies through engineering their design better, plus further enhancements, similar to what allowed the XT series of Zen 2 CPUs to happen. While clock speeds are the flashy thing that catches people's eyes and 4.9GHz on the 5950X is certainly a tasty proposition, the much bigger news surrounding Zen 3 are the changes they've made to the core design. AMD is saying this is an all new design with a bigger jump than we got from Zen to Zen 2. Every area was looked at when trying to improve performance. The major change is a shift in the way the CCX modules work. Zen 2 chiplets, which featured 8 cores, were split into two 4-core CCXs, each with 16 megabytes of L3 cache. Zen 3 unifies the design, meaning each 8-core chiplet has a single CCX with unified access to all 32 megabytes of L3 cache. AMD says this reduces latency for both the cores and for memory significantly, which helps for gaming. But there's more than just that. AMD are claiming a 19% average IPC improvement for Zen 3 
versus Zen 2 based on a GeoMean average of 25 workloads at 4 GHz when comparing 8 core designs to 8 core designs. This comes from many improvements AMD has listed here. We don't have all the nitty gritty technical details just yet outside of the basic core and cache design, although AMD do mention improvements to the front end, branch prediction, execution, and more. So really, frequency isn't the main deal here. Yes, in lightly threaded applications, Zen 3 processors will be able to clock a little higher. At this stage, we aren't sure whether all core frequencies have improved as well, but the major difference is this 19% higher IPC along with reduced latencies due to the new core design. All of these things put together are said to make Zen 3 much faster than AMD's previous generation designs. AMD are also claiming high performance per watt for Zen 3 versus Zen 2, now at 2.4 times that of first generation Zen. AMD did also tell us that Zen 3 specifically had 24% better performance per watt than Zen 2, which doesn't quite fit with the numbers shown here, but it is close. AMD were also proud to boost that it's 2.8 times more efficient than the Core i9-10900K, which is no surprise given Intel is still stuck on 14 nanometer with a Skylake era architecture. One thing that wasn't mentioned in this presentation but was clarified to us later is that the IO die is the same between Zen 3 and Zen 2 processors. So we still have the 12 nanometer IO die design plus slots for up to two chiplets. It's the chiplets which have been improved this generation while the IO die is the same. This means that all connectivity is also the same. So the same configuration of PCIe 4.0 lanes and also the same memory support. Ryzen 5000 will remain at DDR4 3200 as a base spec with up to DDR4 3733 getting a one to one ratio with the Infinity Fabric. We were specifically told that everything you know about Zen 2's memory also applies to Zen 3 so the same recommendations for memory kits will apply. You'll also have spotted that when we looked at the slide with all of the SKUs, the Ryzen 5000 processors are more expensive than previous generations. Each product has received a $50 price bump. So for example, where the Ryzen 7 3800X used to cost $400 at launch, the Ryzen 7 5800X will now cost $450. The gap at the launch of the Ryzen 5000 line will be a little higher than that again, as parts like the 3800X have come down in price over the last year, now sitting around $350 for that chip. So yes, as some people expected and was rumored, Zen 3 processors are more expensive. It'll be interesting to hear the feedback on this one. Based on the performance figures from AMD we're about to go through, I don't think the price hike is unreasonable, but at the same time, AMD has been trundling along nicely as the clear value option with much lower prices than Intel's parts. That has closed with this generation, although you are getting more performance. We're also not seeing any non-X parts at launch. Zen 2 launched with the 3700X and 3600 as cheaper, lower clocked variants of the 3800X and 3600X. That isn't happening this time around, so the price increase for any 6 core part has gone from a minimum of $200 up to $300. However, when we asked about the absence of non excuse AMD didn't exactly shut down the possibility, instead mentioning that they can't talk about possible future processes. So I think the door might still be open for lower cost Zen 3 parts, but we're not getting them at launch or perhaps anytime soon. And like with AMD's XT series processors, you'll only get a box cooler with the 65 watt TDP models or lower. In this lineup, that's just the Ryzen 5 5600X, as the Ryzen 7 CPUs and above all feature 105 watt TDPs and are listed as having DIY cooling. While this isn't unexpected, it's a mildly disappointing value reduction compared to previous generation processors. Like I said moments ago, I don't think the pricing for this generation is unreasonable if AMD's performance claims turn out to be valid. AMD spent almost the entire presentation talking about gaming performance, and it's clear that this generation is the generation AMD expect to take the throne for not just productivity performance, but 1080p gaming as well. Benchmarks from the company themselves should always be taken with a grain of salt, so keep that in mind as we go through some of these claims, but AMD are making some bold statements. In Cinebench R20 single thread, AMD are claiming the Ryzen 9 5900X will hit a score of 631, making it the first desktop processor to hit the 600 point mark. That's with the IPC improvements and the slight clock speed jump to 4.8 GHz turbo. Previously, AMD would get around 530 in this benchmark with the 3950X, 
which means we could be seeing a 100 point or 19% performance improvement, which is right on what AMD has said for average IPC gains, although again, a little bit of this will be from the frequency improvement. The 10900K in our testing scored 551, so this would make the 5900X 15% faster with 100 megahertz more on the table with the 16 core 5950X and its 4.9 gigahertz turbo clock. If we do see single thread performance in this ballpark, it's very impressive from a CPU that doesn't clock as high as Intel's Comet Lake, which hits 5.1 to 5.3 GHz. It's also higher than what we've been seeing out of Tiger Lake mobile designs. Of course, they're only mobile chips, but at 4.8 GHz, Intel's Core i7 1185G7 has been hitting around 600 points in Cinebench R20 single thread. We'd have to get Tiger Lake in a desktop platform for a proper comparison, and that doesn't seem like happening anytime soon. But on face value, it appears that at the 4.8 GHz mark or so, AMD might have the lead in a workload like Cinebench. For gaming, AMD are claiming Ryzen 5000 is the fastest CPU on the market. In their performance charts, which were tested at 1080p high settings, using an RTX 2080 Ti and DDR4 3600 memory for all configurations, including Intel, the Ryzen 9 5900X was 20 to 25% faster in many CPU limited titles than the Ryzen 9 3900 XT. Some gains were up to 50%, like in League of Legends and CSGO, according to AMD's numbers. When compared to the competition, AMD expect to beat the Core i9-10900K in most games. What's most impressive here is that in games where AMD really has struggled in the past, like Far Cry New Dawn, AMD now are claiming a performance lead in this title. In our benchmarking, the 10900K was 18% faster than the 3950X in Far Cry. Now AMD is saying it's 2% ahead of Intel with Zen 3. That's not a huge lead, but given where AMD is coming from, it's very impressive and would put AMD in the conversation for those that want the best of the best gaming CPU. In other titles like you can see here, AMD are typically claiming a 5% or so lead on Intel's best gaming processor. AMD told us that they don't expect to beat Intel in every game, but that they should come pretty close, and on occasion the wins can be significant. We'll have to see where AMD ends up in our benchmark suite, but with this generation, AMD has gone from claiming they have merely competitive gaming performance to being the fastest. And for those that like to do CAD applications on your PC, AMD are also now claiming they have the fastest processor for single thread heavy productivity workloads like SOLIDWORKS. When comparing the 5950X to the 10900K, AMD showed a 6% lead over the 10900K for SOLIDWORKS, assisted by a 27% gain in performance over their previous generation flagship. And finally, AMD also showed some performance per dollar equations. Not a whole lot of detail on what these charts are exactly showing, but AMD also expect to win in value equations across the Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7, and Ryzen 5 lines. Like a lot of the performance numbers we've been talking about, we'll have to assess that in our benchmark suite. So I think this sort of explains why AMD has raised pricing this generation. I'd have loved to see pricing remain the same, but AMD believe they have the best processor in every category. Best for gaming, best for efficiency, best for single thread productivity, and best for multi-thread productivity. Previously, AMD had to juggle a situation where they had quite a strong lead for productivity, but not necessarily the best gaming or single thread performance, so they haven't been able to price their products as a true best of the best part. That's why we saw those CPUs come in often quite a bit below Intel CPUs on the market. With this generation, AMD is saying they have the best part, so they have increased prices to match. The Ryzen 5 5600X is listed at the same $300 price point as Intel's Core i5-10600K. The 5800X is more expensive than the 10700K, and the 5900X is also slightly above the 10900K. And as AMD have shown, they expect their parts to come out better value, especially for productivity because despite being more expensive, they are offering more performance. But the final verdict will have to come in our review. I'm just explaining why I think AMD felt they could increase pricing. I don't necessarily agree with that. I'll have to wait for independent benchmarks to judge the value proposition. What AMD is showing looks impressive, but like all company produced benchmarks, I suspect there has been some level of cherry picking of the data. To what extent we have cherry picking? We'll have to wait until reviews to find out. With that said, I don't think there is anything all that dodgy going on judging from the footnotes on how AMD benchmarked and the data itself. No messing around with the Intel configurations to run under unreasonable conditions, and everything was tested with the RTX 2080 Ti, which I assume was the fastest GPU AMD had access to at the time. AMD also didn't focus on any special accelerator-based workloads like Intel loves to do with their comparisons. Most of what was shown as simple everyday benchmarks across applications and games that a lot of people use or play. 
Time to talk upgrades now and motherboard support for Zen 3 processors. It seems that AMD have learned a lot from the rocky launches of previous Zen CPUs because this time around it's set to be a lot more straightforward if you are planning to upgrade to a new CPU. Support for Ryzen 5000 with 500 series motherboards will come in two stages. Available already is initial support for Zen 3 on existing motherboards. Any BIOS update on these boards that includes a GSA 1.0.8.0 code or newer will be able to post and boot into a system with a new Zen 3 processor installed. This means that people with these boards can already update their BIOS in preparation for Zen 3 next month. Having a quick browse through various vendors shows that a GSA 1.0.8.0 has been floating around in BIOS updates since September or even late August depending on the OEM, even for B550 motherboards. But this isn't just important for people that already have motherboards in hand, it's also going to improve the situation for those buying new motherboards off the shelf for Zen 3. With this BIOS update being out in the wild for probably two months before Zen 3 launches, it will allow more stock to come with the BIOS pre-installed and ready for Zen 3. This is a far better solution than previous years where the BIOS was only available around launch and most boards required an update. It won't solve all the upgrader pain, but it's better than nothing. AMD then says, for the best Zen 3 experience there will be a further BIOS update to a GSA 1.1.0.0 around launch on November 5. It seems that some boards have already received this code and have released updates, but it's expected most 500 series boards will have this update ready around launch. So it sounds like a GSA 1.0.8.0 provides preliminary support, mostly so you then, then can go and update to 1.1.0.0 with the least amount of hassle. As for 400 series motherboards, B450 and X470, AMD are expecting beta BIOSes for these boards to be available starting in January 2021. This is in keeping with what AMD said about how 500 series would be prioritized for launch. They're going to make sure all of those boards are working with that issue before moving on to 400 series products. That update will be coming about two months after release, so not too bad considering how long those boards have been on the market for, but owners won't be getting support during the holiday period. So it's a fairly simple situation. For 500 series owners, updates are available now with preliminary support, and then at launch there will be a further update with the full set of optimizations. 400 series owners will get support in January. As far as we know, there won't be a 600 series of boards anytime soon. It's all about 500 and 400 series for this launch. After seeing what AMD has in store for us with Zen 3, I also think it's super important to note just how crucial 400 series support is with this generation. As you may recall, initially AMD were not going to support Zen 3 on B450 and X470 motherboards until widespread community backlash forced them to change their mind. Well now, it's possible for the boatload of people that bought a highly affordable Ryzen 5 2600 and B450 motherboard combination to drop in a Zen 3 CPU in early 2021 and get a huge performance uplift, all without needing to buy a whole new motherboard. That's going to be a big upgrade for those users, we're potentially looking at 40% better gaming performance at 1080p, plus improvements to productivity performance across a couple of generations. Having these upgrade paths available makes AM4 such a compelling platform to be on, and it's why having support for at least two generations into the future is key. Ryzen 1000 owners got this benefit when upgrading to Ryzen 3000, and now Zen Plus owners can reap the rewards of a Zen 3 upgrade after a couple of years. And finally, in AMD's presentation, we did get a brief look at performance for an upcoming unnamed Radeon RX 6000 series GPU. The GPU was shown off playing a game paired with a Ryzen 5000 series processor, and we also got a handful of benchmark numbers. Shown here is Borderlands 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and Gears of War 5 being played at 4K Ultra or maximum quality settings. All games were playable at more than 60 FPS. We don't know whether this is the highest end part in AMD's lineup, but the product shown here is producing performance around the mark of Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3080. We'll be learning more about the RX 6000 series during AMD's October 28 event, but I guess this is a little bit of a teaser to tide over AMD fans for now. So yeah, that's it for AMD's Zen 3 announcement and also, I guess, teaser for RX 6000 series GPUs. That's pretty much all of our thoughts on the situation. And for now, we'll just have to wait until we get these chips on hand so that we can benchmark them. I think you'll be expecting reviews to go live around that November 5 launch date, um, which is, yeah, nearly a month away from now. So plenty of time for us to test and get all of our thoughts out on those CPUs. So yeah. Exciting times, lots of stuff shown here that was pretty interesting. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can support us through Patreon. Links to that are in the description below. You'll be able to get access to our Discord chat, monthly live streams, uh, behind the scenes videos, all that sort of thing. Subscribe.
subscribe for more reviews, news, all that sort of stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one.